about God's salvation. We celebrate today National Bible Sunday with the theme, The Bible Real Talk. May the Word of God pave the way for a deeper and more meaningful conversation in achieving positive change in our family, in the community, in our country. Our priest presider for this Eucharistic celebration is Reverend Father Alex Paletbat. Let us all rise and greet our Mass celebrant, and, as, and let us glorify the Lord by singing the entrance song. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. To prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mystery, let us pause for a moment and ask the Lord for pardon and strength. God, our Creator, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. God, our Savior, Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. God, our destiny, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May all loving God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest. And on earth, peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone, you alone are the, the Most High, High Jesus Christ, Christ with the Holy Spirit, Spirit in the, the glory of God, God the Father. Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever living God, direct our actions according to your good pleasure, that in the name of your beloved Son we may abound in good works through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. The Jews listened to the priest Ezra, who read and explained God's word to them. The people weep because they realize their unfaithfulness to God's law had caused their banishment, thereafter renewing their commitment to follow the law of the Lord. A reading from the book of Nehemiah. Ezra the priest brought the law before the assembly, which consisted, consisted of men, women, and those children old enough to understand. Standing at one end of the open place that was before the water gate, read out of the book. Ezra the scribe stood on the wooden platform that had been made for the occasion. He opened the scroll so that all the people might see it. 
for he was standing higher up than any of the people. And as he opened it, all the people rose. Ezra blessed the Lord, the great God, and all the people, their hands raised high, answered, Amen, Amen. Then they bowed down and prostrated themselves before the Lord, their faces to the ground. Ezra read plainly from the book of the law of God, interpreting it so that all could understand what was read. Then Nehemiah, that is, his excellency, and Ezra, the priest scribe, and the Levites who were instructing the people said to all the people, Today is holy to the Lord your God. Do not be sad. And do not weep. For all the people were weeping as they heard the words of the law. He said further, Go, eat rich foods, and drink sweet drinks, and allot portions to those who had nothing prepared. For today is holy to our Lord. Do not be sad in this day, for rejoicing in the Lord must be your strength. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Christians are given gifts to build up and enrich the body of Christ, which is the church. Christians should be concerned for one another for the good of the whole body. The second reading. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, as a body is one, though it has many parts, and all the parts of the body, though many are one body, so also Christ. 
For in one spirit we are all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greek, slaves or free persons, and we were all given to drink of one spirit. Now the body is not a single part, but many. If a foot says, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, it does not for this reason belong any less to the body. Or if an ear should say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body. It does not, for this reason, belong to any less to the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing be? If the whole body were hearing, where would the sense of smell be? But as it is, God placed the parts, each one of them in the body as he intended. If they were all one part, where would the body be? But as it is, there are many parts, yet one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I do not need you. Nor again the head of, to the feet, I do not need you. Indeed, the parts of the body that seem to be weaker are all the more necessary. And those parts of the body that we consider less honorable, we surrender with great honor. At our less presentable parts are the are treated with greater propriety, whereas our more presentable parts do not need this. But God has so constructed the body as to give greater honor to a part that is without it, so that there may be no division in the body, but that the parts may have the same concern for one another. If one part suffers, all the parts suffer with it. If one part is honored, all the parts share its joy. Now you are Christ's body and individually parts of it. Some people God has designated in the church to be first apostle, second prophet, third teachers, then mighty deeds, then gifts of healing, assistance, administration, and varieties of tongues. Are all apostles, are all prophets, are all teachers, do all work mighty need, deeds, do all have gifts of healing? Do all speak in tongues? Do all interpret the word of the Lord? Thanks be to God. Please rise for the proclamation of the Holy Gospel. <laughs> The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Since many have undertaken to compile a narrative of the events that have been fulfilled among us, just as those who were eyewitnesses from the beginning and ministers of the word have handed them down to us, I too have decided after investigating everything accurately anew, to write it down in an orderly sequence for you, most excellent Theophilus, so that you may realize the certainty of the teachings you have received. Jesus returned to Galilee in the power of the Spirit, and news of him spread throughout the whole region. He taught in their synagogues and was praised by all. He came to Nazareth where he had grown up and went, accord, went according to his custom into the synagogue on the Sabbath day. He stood up to read and was handed the scroll of the prophet Isaiah. He unrolled the scroll and found the passage where it was written. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring glad tidings to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free and to proclaim a year 
acceptable to the Lord. Rolling up the scroll, he handed it back to the attendant and sat down. And the eyes of all in the synagogue looked intently at him. He said to them, Today this is scripture passage is fulfilled in your hearing. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. So we are now on the another liturgical calendar, the year C, and most of the Sunday readings are focused on the Gospel of St. Luke. St. Luke seems to know Jesus. When I was reading the, the Gospel today, it looks like St. Luke was giving an introductory remark about Jesus. Parang kinumbida siyang isang guest speaker and now St. Luke is introducing the guest speaker. Madalas sa akin nagaganap yan. Kapag ako po ay nagbibigay ng talk, Pagdating ko, mamadaliin ako nung magpapakilala. Father, dito ka nga, paano ka ba kita introduce Sabi ko, yung pagkakakilala mo na lang sa akin, ang iyong sabihin, eh hindi nga kita kilala eh. Eh bakit ikaw ang nag introduce You know, it's so difficult for a person to introduce somebody whom you don't even know. And here, St. Luke seems to know many things about Jesus. Maybe St. Luke made a, a research and he mentioned this to Theophilus. Theophilus means the disciple of the Lord, whoever is this person. I made an investigation, everything accurately anew. Meaning to say, St. Luke... Uh, spent his time trying to know about this man. Siguro marami din siyang binasang mga aklat, nagtanong-tanong sa mga nakikinig at nagpasalin-salin. Remember, this is the third level of the gospel. Ano yung una? Sige nga, ano yung unang gospel na nasulat? It's Mark. St. Mark, the shortest gospel. And then Mark introduced Jesus as the suffering Messiah. And suddenly, Matthew came in and he introduced Jesus in a different way, not as a suffering Messiah, but as the fulfillment of the Old Testament promise. That's why Matthew was telling Jesus as the new Adam, the fulfillment of the Old Testament promise. Why? Because the audience of Matthew were the Jews who became Christians. The audience of Mark were the Christians who were persecuted at that time for being a Christian. And now St. Luke maybe got the, 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 the stories of Mark and Matthew, but he introduced God now in a different way more than the fulfillment of the Old Testament promise, St. Luke introduced Jesus as the Savior of all. Why? Because many of the audience of St. Luke's were the Gentiles. Sige, parang aral na rin natin to. And St. John, the latest gospel, introduced Jesus in a philosophical way. The Word made flesh. I am the bread of life, the vine and the branches. Why? Because the audience of St. John were the Greeks. In the Greco-Roman world. Kaya makikita mo, one Jesus in four Gospels. But St. Luke seems to know more about Jesus, not just a Jesus for the Jews, but the Jesus who fulfilled everything, not 
only for the Jews, but using the, the words of the prophet Isaiah, he is the one anointed by God to proclaim glad tidings to the poor, every poor, to proclaim liberty to the captives, recovery of sight to the blind, oppressed go free, and to proclaim to all a year acceptable to the Lord. It seems that St. Luke knew the heart of Jesus. Parang kilalang kilala niya ang taong pinakikilala niya. In the scriptures, when you talk about knowledge, this is not just about information. When you talk about knowledge, you talk about relationship. For you to know Jesus, for you to enter into his world, you need to listen to his word. Kaalaman, kinalaman, pakialam. You talk about relationship. Do you know Jesus? Do you know him? Kilala mo ba si Jesus? Ano ang pagkakakilala mo sa kanya? If I will ask you one by one here, please introduce Jesus to me. Who is this Jesus? Maybe you will use the Bible to introduce him. But please, don't just talk about the Bible. Talk about your relationship with Him. Maari ba katulad ni San Lucas, hindi mapigilan ng kanyang bibig na para bang sinasabi, pag-usapan natin si Jesus. Nandito tayo ngayon, pag-usapan natin ang Diyos. You know, I, I was talking to the priest this morning, while we were preparing for the homily, you know, they had lots of commentaries, you know, in the table. We were five. And I told them, Pwede bang takpan nyo muna lahat yung mga commentaries na yan? Pwede bang pag-usapan natin siya? Kung ano-ano kasi ang pinag-uusapan natin, kaya nagugulo tayo. pag-usapan natin sino siya para sa iyo kilala mo ba si Jesus can we talk about him can we talk about Jesus from your own very experience You know, one time, I visited the Cancer Institute, you know, madalas ako doon sa PGH because my brother is a pediatric hematologist, so I tried to connect myself with him. May isa akong naging kaibigang bata doon, may cancer sa dugo. The name is Bimbo. Pagdating ko doon, you know, Bimbo, nabubulok na yung kanyang mata, wala na siyang mata. 
because of the cancer of the blood. And I told him, Bimbo, your kuya father is here. Tiningnan niya ako, parang nakikita niya yung kaluluwa ko. Sabi niya, Kumusta ka na kuya father? Si Bimbo na may sakit, siyang nangungumusta kay father. Mukha kang malungkot, kuya father. Paano niyang nakikita ang kaluluwa ko? At habang hinahag ko siya, sabi niya, alam mo, kuya father, sabi ni doctor at ni mami, malapit ko nang makita si Jesus. I'm so excited, kuya father. Waiting for the time that I can embrace Jesus. A seven-year-old boy telling me about Jesus. Do you want to see him, kuya father? So, sanang sabihin, not now. I am so excited. You know, the boy while, the boy while, ano ba yung malalaglag na ako? The boy while uh, narrating his story about the Lord, the blind boy knows Jesus. He is telling me about the love of Jesus. He is telling me about his joy to see Jesus. I don't know. I can sense Jesus telling the very story. Nagugulo ang ating bansa. Kung minsan pati mga ubispo magkakahiwalay. Iba-ibang paninindigan. Kaming mga pare, iba-iba din ang mga pananaw. Kasi, puro pananaw namin ang aming sinasabi. Kasi, puro kami ang magaling. Tayo ang magaling. Kwento natin ang maganda. Mungkahin natin ang tama. Si Jesus kaya ang pag-usapan natin. Sa Malacañang. You know, one time I was telling them, pag-usapan kaya natin si Jesus. You know, God continuously communicating Himself to us. Are you interested about his life? Talaga? When you go back to your family, even just once a week, can the father lead a conversation? Let's talk about the Lord. And you know, when you talk about Jesus, A year acceptable to the Lord. A life acceptable to God will be fulfilled in your heart. Yung nanay ko po nagdadialysis three times a week. And then nagkaroon siya ng heart attack. Akala ko mamamatay na siya last Sunday. Punta ako sa Antipolo and uh, Tinatawagan ako ng kuya ko, go to UST, go to UST. Bakit? Mamamatay na si mama, naghihinga luna. Sorry kuya, pakisabi kay mama, I cannot be with her in, his, in her dying moment because I will celebrate Mass, it's Sunday. Pero pakisabi sa kanya, ibulong mo, habang naghihinga luka ma, pinagmimisa ka ni Father. After the Mass, I went to UST. Sabi ko, Aba, buhay ka pa pala. 
funeral, mas na yung ginawa ko kanina. And then, yung mga kapitbahay namin, you know, my mother is a politician, mahigit 80 puno yung kwartong maliit. At ang sabi, yun ang mga pinag-uusapan nila. Habang ang nanay ko'y sa hirap na hirap, Norma, nakulam ka! Nakulam ka! Pinatawas ka na namin, baboy na itim ang lumabas. Kasi yung baboy na itim na yan, hinihingi ng asawa ng kapatid mo, birthday niya, hindi mo binigay dahil buntis. Ayan, kinulam ka. Hindi mo alam nakakuha sila ng buhok sa'yo. Norma, isuot mo, itali mo ang lasong puti na ito sa ulo mo. Tinalian ng lasong puti ang nanay ko, nagmukhang karate kid. Ang ganda-ganda ng nanay ko, sana nilagay na lang star ni Wonder Woman. Pwede pa. Akala ko nga, pakukulayan pa ng kulay pula ng pusya. Spell pusya. Red na lang. Okay, nang, you know, nang pusya, yung kanyang buhok na magiging girlfriend pa ni Aquaman. And then, hawakan mo ang batong itim na ito. May tarot card pa ng kung ano-anong mga seremonya. I did not intervene them because I didn't want to offend my, my kapitbahay. But I realized one thing. They did not even mention about Jesus. They talk about cards. They talk about anting-anting. They talk about, you know, it's the, what, what year today? Ano bang year na ngayon? Year of the? Sabi ko na eh, Year of the Lord. Anong year of the pig? Are you getting my point? Even in our subconscious, you talk about the year of the pig. Year of the dog pa. Sa February pa yun, sasabihin ng pungsoy. Nagpapungsoy ka na ba? Pag nagpapungsoy ka sa akin, magaling ako dyan. Expert year of the earth dog metal fire. Sa taong ito, huwag kayong magtatayo ng second floor. Bawal. Kung walang first floor. So, you know, you know they, they talk about many things. Norma, nakulam ka. Pagkatapos nilang umalis, tinawag ko lahat ang aking mga titang matatandang dalaga. Let's have a meeting together with my mother. Wala ako napapansin sa inyo. Kunwari nagdadasal kayo, And you don't even talk about the Lord. As if the Lord has nothing to do with what is going on in us. Do you really believe that the Lord is our strength? That the Lord is our power? That only Jesus is our life? Oo naman. Eh bakit may anting-anting kayo? Wala namang masama, Father, doon. May masama. Walang nawawala. Ah, naniniguro pa. May nawawala. And then I told to my mother, muntik nang atakihin yun, muntik siyang mamatay dun. Sabi ko, Ma, eh wala akong magawa anak kasi sila naman nandyan. Ma, gusto mo bang wag nang magdialysis? Gusto mong gumaling na ngayon? Wag kang kay Jesus hihingi, madidisappoint ka lang. Humingi ka sa demonyo ibibigay niya ngayon. Pari ba itong kausap niyo? Gusto mong wag tumanda? Painumin ka ng elixir? Hindi ka na pupunta kay Vicky Bello? Gusto mong maging malakas? Wag kang sa Diyos hihingi. Sa demonyo. Magaganap ngayon. Gusto mong yumaman overnight? Most of the millennials, gusto nila overnight riches? Hindi pwede yan. The turtle always win. Bo Sanchez, okay. okay. And you will be surprised. Gusto mo yung gusto mo maganap ngayon? It is not the life acceptable to the Lord, but the life acceptable to you? Humingi ka sa demonyo. Ibibigay niya ngayon. Pero may kapalit yan. 
ang kaluluwa mo. And I told to my mother, the year acceptable to the Lord, the life acceptable to the Lord must be fulfilled in your heart, not the life acceptable to you, more than what I want. Allow God's will to be fulfilled in your heart. Kung gusto ng Diyos, magdialisis ka hanggang sa kamatayan mo, oras-oras, so be it. And we will be with you in your suffering. It is not what is acceptable to me, but it is a kind of life acceptable to my God. And oftentimes, what is acceptable to God is the complete opposite of what I want. Are you still here? So, ang ipagdadasal ko sa inyo, in the name of Jesus, na sana ang maganap sa iyo, higit sa nais mo, ay ang nais ng Diyos sa iyo. Jesus, unrolling the scroll, says, Today, this scripture passage is fulfilled in your hearing. Ano nga kasi yung binasa? That the year acceptable to the Lord will be fulfilled in your life. Yes, Lord. So be it. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men, for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Lord, listen to our prayer. Lord, Lord. listen to our prayer. That the Pope, <coughs> bishops, priests, deacons, and all ministers of the word may tirelessly bring Christ's good news to the poor, the sick, the prisoners, and the lonely, we pray. Lord, Lord listen, listen to, to our, our prayer. prayer. That those who serve our country may fully grasp the word of God as the source of power and authority, we pray. Lord, Lord listen, listen to, to our, our prayer. prayer. That the word of God may become the source of true hope for those who are still in agony because of separation, terrorism, poverty, materialism and hopelessness, we pray. Lord, Lord listen, listen to, to our, our prayer. prayer. The, the initiatives of the Episcopal Commission for the Biblical Apostolate and of other groups and movements devoted to the promotion, study, and living of the Word of God may continue to grow and persevere despite many trials and difficulties, we pray. Lord, Lord listen, listen to, to our, our prayer. prayer. In the silence of our hearts, let us pray for our personal intentions and all the intentions offered in this Holy Mass. We pray. Lord, listen to our prayer. 
In a very special way, we pray for all the faithful departed, especially the soul of Mr. Henry C., who became instrument also for, <laughs> for giving us for giving us a place to use the SM Aura. We pray for all the souls who are close to our heart too. All this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated. We will now have the offering of the bread and wine, symbols of the fruit of our hard-earned labor of the week. Please join in the singing of the offertory song. Sisters and brothers, that our sacrifice may be made acceptable to God, the all loving Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept our offering, O Lord, we pray, and in sanctifying them, grant that they may profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For you so loved the world that in your mercy, you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as in exaltation we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us 
the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it, gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church is spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Milo, Hubert, our Bishop, and all the clergy. In a very special way, we pray for all the bishops of the Philippines who are having their conference at this present moment. They are together in prayer, discernment, making decisions for the church. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your son jesus christ through him and with him and in him o god almighty father in the unity of the holy spirit all glory and honor is yours forever and ever of Jesus.
Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await in joyful hope the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of the church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. We offer each other the peace of Jesus. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold Jesus, behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are we who are going to partake in his sacred broken body. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. For orderly communion, please be seated and wait for the ushers to guide you. Your love is wider 
Let us pray. Please rise. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that receiving the grace by which you bring us to new life, we may always glory in your gift through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for some announcements. Who do you lead or influence? Can you recall a moment when you led or influenced others with courage when it is so much easier to cower in fear? Our talk this afternoon, Talk 3, Courageous Love, will help us answer these questions with the help of our dear brother, To. Have you ever experienced dryness in your prayers? Have you ever wondered if you are praying correctly? Do you want to learn more ways to pray? Do you want to experience a deep encounter with the Lord through prayer? If your answer to any of the, of the question is yes, we would like to invite you to join us in our prayer and life workshops where we will guide you to experience an encounter with God through different prayer methods and Bible readings. Come and experience this life-changing workshops, previous part workshops. Previous participants can freely join us. It will be at Mahati on Feb 6, 2019 at 7.30 p.m. or at Mandaluyong Ortigas area on Feb 11, 7.30 p.m. at St. Francis Hall. For more information, please visit our website, www tovpil.org or contact 0920-911-554 uh, Just an additional announcement. May we request all the may, may I request all the youth to please stand up. If, uh, no. Youth, please. Yung mga youth natin. Youth na nga, youth. Age uh, 12. O oh, 13, 13 na na po, or 12, pwede na po, 12. Sana mga youth natin. Daming youth dito, ayaw tumayo, ayun, yun, mga, mga youth natin. Yeah, may I request that after the worship, please uh, proceed to room number 5. Uh, may I encourage also, mga parents, kung may mga anak po kayong mga youth, that uh, starting today, uh, we will have our youth gathering for, for the youth. Basta uh, right after the worship, we will gather the youth. Kung ang uh, uh, children's ministry after the mass, we encourage young youth naman after the worship. So they'll they'll be have their their own teachings as well. So please encourage your sons or daughters to join the youth group after the worship every feast. Thank you. And lastly, sorry, Father um, Sandalang, we also request all the couples who are inside or who are present today, right, right after the feast, we will uh, invite you to please. Uh, Stay for a while. We'll uh, we want to meet you personally, and uh, we want to somehow we, uh, want to talk to you. Sabi ng ni Father kanina pag-usapan natin ang Dios. But uh, no, kidding aside, we want to uh, to invite the couples here uh, to to join us after the feast. Uh, we'll stay in one corner lang po, just for two or three minutes lang po. Marami pong salamat. And let's give a round of applause for Father Alex for celebrating the Holy Mass with us. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Thank you. So, tayong mga youth dun sa kabila, no? <laughs> uh, I just want to announce to you that the Our Lady of Antipolo Retreat House is now ready for you, no? Ginamit na po ito ng some of the Feast Bay area, ng 
ng uh, fees value verde i don't know kung kailan ang sm aura so you are all invited there then so the two buildings are already okay but i am now on the third phase so third phase na ako hindi pa ako huminto there is another building that will be constructed three floor building that will uh, uh, that is for the marriage encounter and family ministry so I'm, I'm also con uh, begging you again to help me to, to make this dream for our church realize. This is not for me. Pinag-uusapan nga namin ng mga pare, tayo ang nagko-construct. Pagkatapos nito, malilipat tayo, iba ang gagamit. It's okay. That's our ministry. no? So please help me. Kung ayaw niyong magbigay ng pera, tinatanggap ko ang simento, bakal, at hollow blocks. And also, pintura. Pwede na, no? So, anuman yung maibibigay natin, malaking bagay po ito. And I am inviting you, please visit me there. Don't just give material support. What we need is your presence. That is not my retreat house. That is our retreat house. And ang pinaprioritize ko doon, the Light of Jesus community. Amen. So, thank you for your love. Please rise. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now at the hour of our death. Amen. Most sacred heart of Jesus, pray for us. Immaculate heart of Mary, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Siya nga pala, doon sa retreat house na yon, ang pinag-uusapan si Jesus. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May all loving God bless you. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Huwag kang magsasawang pag-usapan si Jesus. Humayo kang mapayapa. Thanks be to God. Rejoice in the Lord always and again I say, again I say,
Good evening, Feast SMR. Are you ready to worship tonight? You know, I was reading the Bible this morning and I, I read the book of Joshua. And one of the... It's my favorite book in the Bible actually kasi sobrang action action story, action, parang action film in my head. But one good thing about um, that book that I remembered up to this hour is um, when God promised them that the that the land of Jericho will be given to Joshua. And so God ordered them to go around Jericho to do the same routine that they would do for seven days until the walls of Jericho would fall down. So on the seventh day, they did the same routine and they blew their horns and they shouted. And then after that, the walls of Jericho fell down. What I want us to appreciate here is that they shouted and they believed that the walls of Jericho will fall down even before it did. And the Israelites and Joshua believed in God's promises. So are you here, brothers and sisters, holding on to God's promises today? So now I invite you to stand and let us just shout and praise and worship God, our Father, even before the seventh day, even before His promises is revealed. Because God has come today to bless us, to just fill us with His love, to fill us with His grace, and to fulfill His promise that He has for us. Tonight, we will worship in our hearts, opening our souls to God's blessings. Jesus, we just praise you tonight. Hallelujah. Come on, if you know this song, sing with us. Not gonna wait, wait for the walls to fall. Cause I know a name that will bring them down. Come on, we sing. I got a praise walking within my soul. I'm not ashamed to declare it now. Guide of the world, tremble in darkness. Nothing can stop it. You are the God of the promise. Every word shall be accomplished. Nothing can stop it. You are the God of the promise. Oh, Jesus, we praise you tonight. Prepare the way, the King of glory comes. Before this day, every fear must bow throw off your chains jesus destroy them all up from the grave he is with us now light of the world tremble in darkness nothing can stop it you are the god of the promise every word will be accomplished nothing can stop it you are the god of the promise come on let's praise jesus before the walls fall down before the promises before chains be broken before gates of hell Nothing will stand a chance because our God is a God of promise. Our God keeps His word. Our God is great. Our God is indescribable. Come on, tonight we sing in praise. The gates of hell will never stand a chance. Your name. Yeah. 
to sacrifice his Isaac, his only begotten son. That's how deep loves God, the love of God is for us. For it is actually written in the scriptures. In Romans 5 verse 8, God demonstrated his love for us through this, that while we are still sinners, Christ died for us. So can you imagine how great the love of God is? It's the purest love of all. It's the greatest thing that mankind has ever known. Because God's love for us keeps no record of wrongs. It's bigger than anything. Bigger than our sins, our mistakes, our shortcomings, our fears. So tonight, brothers and sisters, I would just like to invite you that through this song, we proclaim and we adore and we acknowledge how God has sacrificed for us. Let this song be a prayer of how God's love for us. It's beyond words. God's love for us is imaginable. God's love for us is more bigger than anything that our minds can wrap around it. It is simply indescribable. this song. Let it be our prayer tonight. In Jesus' name. Struggle with all to one. 
Days ago, I asked Brother Bo Sanchez if he knew of any saint or any biblical character or any personality in the religious field who had an injury and still did what he had to do. He mentioned Saint Ignatius. Saint Ignatius, during time of war, he was hit in his leg by a cannonball. Grab a cannonball. And yet, that never stopped him from preaching, that never stopped him from doing God's work and God's will. I preach from pain. Last week, I was hospitalized because I was brought there because I had intense pain in my lower abdomen as in sakit, parang nanganganak. And I don't know how that feels. I was rushed and I, the doctor found out I had diverticulitis. It's an inflammation of the, it's an inflammation, it's an infection that causes the inflammation of the intestines. So lahat ng region na yun masakit, as in sakit. And the doctor, thank God, he gave me treatments, he gave me medicines to, to treat it. I got out of, the, out of the hospital last Sunday, but the pain continued. Hindi pa pala tapos on. That was just the beginning of the healing. I was saying, Lord, kaya ko ba mag-preach tonight? And the Lord told me, and I, I just declared in my heart, I may be in pain, but I am in praise. I may be injured, but I'm inspired to do something tonight. The Lord, you, you can never keep a blessed man down. Amen? And so whatever you're going through, if you're in pain, if, you're, if your heart is in pain, if you're struggling, know that you're here for a purpose. Pare pareho lang tayo. And I know he brought me here for a purpose. He could have chosen another substitute preacher. Brother Randy can't make it tonight, obviously. 
But He brought me here to speak to at least one person a special message that only my story can preach to. So my prayer is, at, Lord, at least isa sa atin, may ma-bless, sulit na yung pain ko. Minimum of one, maximum of all. Sana ma-bless. Amen? In life, there are called momentum breakers. Say that. Hindi pa ang ganda ng diet mo. Momentum, ganda ng momentum mo ng diet. Biglang natapilok ka. And you failed. And you fall. And say, huwag na lang. Huwag na lang tayo mag-diet. Sayang pala. Pero I, I realized there will be momentum breakers in our spiritual life, in our relationships, in our faith, in everything in our lives. But when you when you trip, it doesn't mean you fall and you're dead. It means you just trip. And so you just get back up and continue the journey. And so I declared, Sige, I will be a momentum breaker breaker. I will break the momentum breakers in my life and say, Hindi, I will not allow sickness to stop me from doing God's work. I will not pay, I will not let pain stop me from preaching God's message of love. Amen? So Tyren, you know why I'm still here? Because it takes courage to do what I'm going to do tonight. And it will take courage for you to continue and make this year truly your best year ever. Amen? So welcome to Courage. Say Courage. This is the time we're going to talk about Courage. And this is the third talk of the series. In this series, we're to learn about getting out of our comfort zone. Tingnan mo yung katabi mo. Nasa comfort zone ba siya? Is that person still in a comfortable state? Na kulang na lang, makatulog na siya. We will learn how to get out of our, out of our comfort zone into our courage zone. Say courage zone. To give you a quick recap, talk one we talked about two weeks ago. It, the talk was entitled Courageous Obedience. Say that. In Courageous Obedience, we learned that you're the miracle you've been praying for. That you don't have to wait for someone, you don't have to wait for a sign, you don't have to wait for extra skills. What you need to conquer this year is already in you and with you. And all you need to do is to do something about it. Talk to us last week, we talked about Courageous Faith. Say that. In Courageous Faith, we learned about that God is setting us free. Sino sa inyo nag-let go last week? Raise your hands. Woo! Letting go of some things in our life, our attachments that hinder us from flying, certain people in our lives, certain situations in our lives that prevent us from being who we need to be. Tonight's talk is entitled, Courageous Love. Say that. Look at the person beside you. Tell that person, sometimes all you need is love. Turn to the other person and tell that person, Sino love mo? Love mo to? <laughs> so we start off by praying our favorite prayer here at the feast. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, Amen. Together, today I receive all of God's love for me. Today I open myself to the unbounded, limitless, overflowing abundance of God's universe. Today I open myself to God's blessings healing and miracles. Today, open myself to God's Spirit to become more like Jesus every day. Today, I proclaim that I'm God's beloved. I'm God's servant. I'm God's powerful champion. Because I am blessed, I'm blessing the world. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's lift our hands towards the word of the Lord and let's sing. special message to our hearts tonight, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. I asked them to put the chair in, um, on stage, and if I, if you will allow me, can I sit on this chair as I preach later? Siguro pag niyo na lang, so you will see me. Okay lang? Yes. I will preach sitting down, but I will, that means I can preach longer and I can survive the night. So, the one big message for courageous love is so beautiful. It is, God is madly in love with you. Say that. Uy, cheesy, cheesy, corny, but sometimes controversial because it doesn't connect. A, a God, a mighty being, created us, and isn't it enough? It enough that He created us? Isn't it enough that He just says provides everything? But this God and deity says, besides um, creating you, I will love you, and I love you, and I'm deeply and madly in love with you. This message is life changing. We may have heard this a lot of times. Sino-sino nakarinig ng neto dati pa? Raise your hands. 
We've heard that again and again. But my question is, has it sunk in? Has it penetrated your life and allowed you to change? Because we've heard messages like this all our lives in church. God is love. Um, God knows who does not pay. Jesus heals. Um, wait for the ushers to guide you. <laughs> Sometimes we hear that so much that it doesn't connect anymore. And sayang eh, this is the most powerful message that God preaches to you. And this is a great start to the year. Amen? When I was hospitalized last week, first time in my life, I have never been hospitalized in my life. Um, sorry, just to, rem I have to remind, the youth, you go to room number eight, not five. Room number eight. Kasi hindi youth yung nag-announce, nakalimutan niya. It's not group, room five. It's room eight. Because this is room five. So youth, you go there later. Kaibigan ko yun, Simon. So when I was hospitalized, I, I realized there was something that I'm, I'm thankful that diverticulitis is a treatable sickness. It's just painful. It's treatable and it's, I don't need surgery. So that's a blessing in itself. And what they asked, asked me, to, uh, what they gave me was medicines. I needed antibiotics to kill the infection so the inflammation subsides. Well, I learned something there. And so the pain goes away. I was asking because they gave, me, uh, they gave me medicine via IV drip. You know what IV drip is? This is what it looks like. Yeah. So first time to ever have, have a dextrose. I'm, in, I'm wearing a jacket now. And there are pin marks here. IV drip is given. A medicine goes straight to your veins. And I was asking, why is it necessary to have an IV drip versus oral medicines? Because it's painful. I had, I had lots of IV marks here. I have another here. Because they try different veins over time. The doctor said IV drip is better because it gets into your system faster. If you take a medicine orally, it enters but it goes through the digestive system and it spreads to the tissues but some gets out. But it isn't as quick. If you want medicine to take its effect fastest and most effective, do it straight to the veins. Then it, gets, it heals you faster. When you hear messages like what I preached a while ago, does it get about God's madly in love in you, with you? Is it like a medicine that you take and it takes a while to connect? Or is it like an IV drip that you allow God to say, Lord, you told me you love me. Let it enter into my bloodstream. Let it enter into my life stream, into my spiritual veins, so that it changes me and it, remains, it helps me remain changed. Get into my veins, Lord. Turn to the person beside you. Tell that person, you're so vain. <laughs> Let it electrify you. So tonight as I preach, invite God and say, Lord, okay, whatever message you have for me tonight, speak directly and enter my veins. Enter my life. That it will not linger around until it gets dissipated, but it goes straight to where it needs to go. So that my whole life will change and my whole life will be electrified. Take it in. Don't just show on it. My one big message or my one big verse for you is from Ephesians 3 verse 8. Let's read this. Wow, got an individual. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ. And to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Love this verse. But the main message of this verse is in verse 9. Let's read that. To grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ. Verse 18. May that be the message that we will do tonight. May we grasp tonight how wide, how long, how great is God's love for us. And as we grasp that, may we allow that to electrify our beings, to change us, to make us who we need to be. May it enable you to be who you want to be and help you get your year. Who wants this year to be their best year ever? Raise your hands. Woo! How has it been so far? Woo! <laughs> Faith. Let's let God and allow God just to speak a final message to, to continue this, this message of courage and give us what we continue need, to need to make this year our best ever. Amen?
Father, speak a special message into our hearts tonight. Give us something that we need. And give us courageous love, Lord Jesus. And help us to fathom your courageous love. And may this really electrify our hearts and help us to become who we need to be, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Hello, hello, there. Another correction for the non-youth. Yung youth is 12 to 21. Rooms 12 to 21. Okay. Tama, no? 12 to 21. 8 to 21. Basta, oh. <laughs> hanapin Sorry. All right, let's all take our seats. Okay lang? Can you see me? Ah, this feels so much better. <laughs> Try nyo kaya to. <laughs> I would not wish this on anyone. It's a very painful sickness. But thank God, there's relief um, as I continue to take med uh, medicines. and get, um, I'm thankful for the prayers. A lot of you are my Facebook friends, and a lot of you sent love. That kept me going. That gave me strength to continue what I'm doing. Again, for those who don't know me, I'm the feast builder. I'm Torelova, feast builder, feast mahati legaspi. I'm the third king, uh, the third magi dun sa bulletin. Tatlo kami na nandyan, brother John, brother Randy, and myself. Um, and again, I'd like to welcome everyone. Welcome to Courage. Say Courage. Again, I asked that question. How is your January so far? Started well. Whoa! Did you get your goals or are you getting your goals? We, we did goal getting or goal setting ng, ng courageous obedience talk. Ano? Have you established your system so that you can get your goals? Are you running gate, great? Have you, do you have courage na and say, yes, this is my year? O parang wala na. <laughs> Next year na lang ulit, Lord. Whoa, 2020 20 na lang. A lot of people stumbled. They started great. They fall, fell in one aspect of their month on another aspect. And I said, Sige, Lord. Parang New Year's resolution to, I'll try again next year. I saw this, um, I re I'm reading this famous book. It's called Facebook. I was reading Facebook the other day. I saw this post. Let's read this. Aloud. <laughs> Ang sarap, ano? Kunyari, okay, sige, sige, Lord. Um, I failed in January. I'll try again February. But it's, it's, I just want to encourage you. Tripping is part of the journey. My January wasn't great. My January was one of the worst of my, of my life, and it's my birth month. Panaman. Because I got this sickness, and it really paralyzed my activities and the way I did things. I, was start, I started off great because I, I started intermittent fasting um, last May, and I lost a lot of weight. And I was all going now to get... Um, fitness goals. My goal in January was to, to be fit. So to add to weight loss is to um, get a greater physical body. The funny thing is, the day before it happened to me, I was working out. The day after, the pain I experienced was actually added by the pain of my abs aching. Sabi ko saan, dapat na nga, hindi na workout Huwag na lang pala dapat mag-workout. But it's, it's common and it's normal to trip in your journey. But that doesn't mean you should stop. Tripping is part of the journey and you should just stand back up. Don't even have to wait for February. Whatever you declare that you will get this year, continue the journey and know that January, the tests are part of the journey on, the, on your travel. So continue lang. If so, I, I, I love this. If something doesn't work when you first tried it, if you failed, Try something else. Be creative. There's this story that there's this Mexican who was trying to cross the American border. We know there's an issue there right now. There's this Mexican trying to cross the border, and he, he 
was traveling on a bike, and the border patrol said, op up. They didn't say op up. Hey, hey. What's that you're bringing? On his bike, he had two sacks of sand, two heavy sacks of sand. So they said, no, it's just sand. Of course, they would doubt it, so they had to inspect. After inspecting the, whole, the two packs, the two sacks, they found nothing. Okay, he can continue. The next month, the same border guys saw the same Mexican guy on a bike with two sacks of sand again. So, hey, 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 that's dubious. Why will you bring sand? There is sand in the U.S. Why bring sand? So, yeah, it's just two bags of sand. They inspected further. They, talagang, they really checked very well to see if he was hiding something where he could not see before. But true enough, there was nothing. Okay, continue. It went on for six months. He came on his bike with two sacks of sand, found nothing, continued. The Border Patrol guys were wondering, what's, this? what's the deal with this guy? Finally, there was one, one Border Patrol guy who saw this Mexican dude in the town nearby in the U.S. He, off duty, he was off duty, so he asked him, hey, I'm, I'm wondering, I just wanted to know, what are you smuggling in? Because I, don't, I, I promise, I won't, I, won't, um, I, won't, I, know, I won't catch you or I won't prosecute you. What you tell me is between us. What are you smuggling? You know what the Mexican ask, uh, answered? He said, bicycles. The bicycles pala yung pinapasok niya. And the border patrol was looking at something. So the lesson we learned there is if it doesn't work the first way or if you have some other plan, maybe a creative other plan is the better way to get it. So there are many ways to getting our goals. There are many ways to making things happen in our lives. When trials hit, don't adjust the plan. Uh, sorry, when trials hit, don't abandon the plan. Adjust the process. You've been working out and it doesn't work. And you didn't work in the gym. Ka. Gym doesn't connect with you. Then try jogging. If you're trying to love your family because they, you, you can never bring your family to the feast, you're trying to love them, then don't try to bring them to the feast. Just spend more time with them. And eventually when you have a better relationship, you can bring it to the feast. If something in your business doesn't connect, try a different technique. Continue the plan, don't abandon it, just adjust the process. Because the worst case of all is if you are tripped and you remain down and say, okay, I don't wanna continue anymore, this has been a bad start. I don't wanna continue. Just adjust the process and continue. Tell the person beside you, recalculate. Parang ways in Recalculate. The journey is the same. The destination is the same. The journey might have potholes, but ask the Lord to help you recalculate to get there. So let's re revisit our one big message. Together, let's read this aloud. Game. God is madly in love with you. This is key. The reason why a lot of people lead defeated lives is because they have a faulty belief system. They think that all our lives we've been screamed at by our parents, by our bullies in school, by society, that we're no good, that we don't deserve to be happy, that we don't deserve joy in our lives, that we shouldn't dream at all because it will never happen for us. And so this is powerful because it tells you, no, God loves you. The being that created you, that not just made you, but He loves you and He's concerned about you. We sometimes think God is a stern lolo who always is waiting for us to falter and fail and he's there to spank us. But when you realize, no, God says, you're worthy of your dreams. You're worthy of being happy. You're worthy because I love you. God is not mad at you. God is madly in love with you. Amen? God is not mad at you. God is madly in love with you. So if you're doubting God's love for you, how could a, a loving God love me? I'm a sinner. I'm not like the people beside me. Look at the person beside you. That's a saint. Some people say, I don't deserve God's love. I don't deserve to be, probably he loves them more than me. But God's message is no. He's mad in love with you. Put your hands over your chest and say, and say with me. Close your eyes. God loves me. One more time. God's madly in love with me. So he's not mad at you for what you did in the past. He will forgive that. He can and he will. 
Some people, they fall because they feel so much guilt of their the past sins, transgressions, mistakes, that they fail to see, na, they, they, fa- they realize that I don't deserve love anymore. Maybe this is God's punishment for me. So my message is clear. God's madly in love with you. And he can power your year by firstly filling you up with love so that you can love and live a full year and conquer anything. Nothing you can do can take away his love for you. Amen? Nothing you can do, ever do, have ever done or will ever do can take away God's love for you. On the second way, nothing that can be done to you can take away God's love for you. Some people don't realize, some people think that they are not worthy of love because someone abused them when they were young. And that screwed up their belief system. But nothing you can do can take God's love away from you and nothing that can be done to you can take away God's love for you. He loves you and he just penetrates and goes straight to the veins and say, I love you. That's courageous love. I love this verse from Romans 8. It says, let's read this together. Or you read this for me. Woo! Can that, no? Let's give her a round of applause. Some of us have heard this in church. Some of us have preached this. But let God speak a new message tonight to touch what you need to touch in your life right now. That nothing, no spirituality, no situation, no problem, no debt, no death and no debt can take away God's love for you. No neighbor, no, no, no bully, no boss, no subordinate, nor bad Marriage, no bad relationship can take away God's love for you. And so God's love is there. And all you need to do is to say, yes, Lord, enter. And, and I accept that. If you only know, knew this truth and allow this to enter your system, it will change the way you live your life. It will change everything. It will change how you work. When you go back to office on Monday, instead of saying, I am defeated, I, I don't deserve a promotion, I don't deserve success, you will say, no, God loves me. And he has the best in store for me. And I, and I deserve the best. It will d- change the way you dream. Before, Lord, dream ko, ito na lang, okay na, na, I'll just survive a year again. No, because God loves me. It changes the way I think and I will dream this year. Okay, Lord, I will dream my wildest dreams for 2019. Again, who wants this to be their best year ever? Raise your hand. You, do you want that in the, at the end of this year, on December of 2019, you will look back to, that, to this year and say, wow, that happened. Puede pala. My dreams have been, my goals have, and dreams have been checked. Allow God's love just to start off in your life. It will change the way you trust before you're very doubtful and suspicious of everyone. Because you think, no, they will just get love from me. I can't be give love anymore. But when you get God's love in your life and you say, I have so much love from God, it's time to give love. And lastly, it will change the way you smile. Because you know that God loves you. And that no matter what happens, you've got him on at your side. It gets, gives you a smile that can never be replaced. And the most beautiful smile of all. Amen? Put your hands over your chest again and declare this. God is on my side. He wants your 2019 to be your best year ever. Amen? That's not just a prayer. Now, Lord, please let my 2019 be my best ever. He wants it to happen for you. He wants to help you make it that way. If you only knew God's immense love for you, Imagine the barriers you would break through. If you only knew and really knew and really allowed it to enter your life, God's immense love for you, imagine the barriers you would break through. Allow him to help you break through the barriers of sin in your life this year. Lord, I have an addiction. 
Lord, I have a tendency. Lord, I have a sin that's robbing me of my joy. So get this year, Lord, with your love in me, let's try to be better this year. It will help you break the barriers of fear. Lord, I can't do it. I can't get out of my comfort zone. I'm always in my comfort zone. Allow God's love to help you break that barrier. Barriers of self-loathing. Lord, I hate myself because of what was done to me. Allow him to break that barrier this year. Of depression, of sadness, of misery, of self-doubt. If you only knew and really knew, hindi tipong head knowledge, yeah, I know that. But if it enters your bloodstream and say, yes, I want to know and I want God's love just to change me and break barriers in me. Know that he's madly in love with you and he's on your side. And his goal is not just that you get your best year ever, but his goal is that you get your best year ever with him. That he helps you with it. Because in the process, you don't just get your goals, you get your goals with him in the journey. And you become closer to Him. Your relationship with Him improves. Your trust in, in Him improves. And actually, you're declaring, you're not just declaring, this is my year. You're declaring, Lord, this is our year. This is the year I'm going to get closest to you, Lord. The year that I'm going to experience your love more powerfully in my life. Amen? So let's win this together, Lord. Let's ask that from the Lord. I'll build, uh, let that build from an abundance of your love tank that you get from God. May you draw closer to God like never before this year so that it overflows to others. Amen? Let's give it a round of applause. Now let's revisit the story of Abraham and Isaac. If you have been here for the past two weeks, we've been talking about Abraham and Isaac and their, their colorful adventures. The Lord asked Abraham to sacrifice his son Isaac and Isaac was the one who brought um, who brought the, he was the sacrifice, we learned that. Then eventually the Lord stopped him from doing that. But let's look at it from a different lens. Say different lens. Let's read the Bible tonight using the way our church fathers, our early church fathers read the Bible. When we say church fathers, we're talking about the great theologians of the early Catholic church. Like Clement of Rome, Ignatius of Antioch. Irenaeus of Lyons, and Origen of Alexandria. These people lived in the first to the fourth century. The way they read their Bible, the method was called tep, tep, typological, sakit na nga, sumakit pa. typological exegesis. Try saying that. What does that mean? I don't know. <laughs> in their minds, the entire old, the, the funny thing is here, in their minds, the, these Bible scholars, the entire Old Testament points to Jesus. That's typological exegesis. The entire Old Testament points to Jesus. It's all connected. Because sometimes when you read your Bible, di ba parang minsan naliligaw ka, parang, why would I need to know the story of Abraham? He lived before, he lived as a farmer or as a rich man, etc. Learned about Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Joshua. What's its connection to me now? How will I learn from that? I'm not a shepherd. I'm not a, I don't, I don't wear robes. I don't live in the desert. Ano connection sa akin ngayon? That's the reason why some of us, they love, they don't like the Old Testament as much. They love the New Testament. Because the New Testament story of Jesus talks about, anong gagawin ko bukas sa trabaho? Love your neighbor. <laughs> Do not kill your boss. Because the Old Testament is so foreign, they sometimes focus on the New Testament. But there are two things that we have to know about these, this whole message. Number one, let's read this together. The entire Bible is one magnificent love story. This is God's love letter to you. God loves you and this whole Bible is written for you. And number two, your life is part of this one love story. When you read about Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Moses, Joshua, David, you're not just reading about some historical figure in the past na walang connection sa yo. The story that God spoke through the Bible about them is God's message to you. Because the God who loved them is the same God who loves you. Ah, God was able to do this to them he can do that to me. 
God who saved them is the g- same God who saves you. The God who rescued, for example, Joshua when he was fighting against the, the, the enemies, the God who rescued them is the same God who will rescue you from yung mga tinataguan yung mga collector. The God who provided for them is the same God who will provide for you. The God who gave manna in the desert is the same God who will provide finances when you need it the most. The God who guided them through the desert and eventually through lessons learned, reach their destination, is the same God who guides you and who will continue to guide you. The God who blessed their year is the same God who will bless your year. Amen? Tell the person beside you, the lessons are for you. So let's analyze the Abraham-Isaac story. The church fathers saw Isaac as a Christ figure. There are seven parallels that I want to unfold before you tonight. Um, on the parallelism between Isaac and Jesus. When I was younger, <laughs> nung youth pa ako, in the 1990s, I used to, I, I'm, I'm, I'm bred and raised at the Light of Jesus community. Uh, for those who don't know me, I've been attending my first, I attended my first prayer meeting 30 years ago when I was 12. So youth group, I feel ya. Um, and we grew up in the youth community of Brother Bo, so we've been trained by Brother Bo all our lives. Uh, my wife is also a youth leader then. Hindi pa kami noon. We didn't even know about each other then. But there was every, every summer we had a youth camp. It's called uh, STC, Summer Training Camp or Conference by CYA. Anyone know what CYA is? Christ Youth in Action. There was this one guy who was a very popular preacher. His name is Rohel Plata. He was a very popular and famous and loving and endearing guy. He was so funny funny guy. He would enter a coliseum with suguro thousands of people and, and he would tell the people, I'm sorry, I'm very nervous. I'm not used to speaking to a very small crowd. Funny guy. He died of cancer eventually. Even, even as I was young. But there was, he was telling us about these seven parallels when we were, we were part of his group then in that summer camp. And he was saying, fourth or fifth pa lang, kinikilabuto na ako. Kasi it's very very powerful to see wow Isaac and Jesus they're connected which proves a point that the Old Testament is connected to the new number one let's se- uh, read through the seven parallels both are loved by their fathers yet sacrificed by their fathers Jesus was loved by the father God yet sacrificed for the cause Abraham loved his son pinagdasal <laughs> He, they got Isaac when he and Sarah, his wife, was so old. Para sa, kung ikaw yun, Lord, binigay mo pa, kukuni mo rin pala. And he loved his son, but he was sacrificed and obeyed God. So that's a parallel number one. Number two, both are only sons. In Genesis 22 verse 2, it says, God tells Abraham, take your son, your only son, Isaac, whom you love so much. On the other hand, when Jesus was baptized in Matthew 3.17, God's voice declared, God announces, This is my own dear Son, with whom I am pleased. Number three, both obey, swipe, both obey their father's will. These sons did not go against their father. They didn't say, Dad naman, why me? They obeyed their father's will. Jesus obeyed God. He he did ask, but it just left as an ask. Lord, kung kaya namang hindi mangyari, then take it away. But if it's your will, let it happen. Isaac did what his father told them to do. Galeng, no? Parehong pareho. Number four. Both carry wood up to the mountain. You see that? You see what happened? Jesus carried the cross up the mountain of Golgotha, of the, of the hill of Golgotha. Isaac carried the wood na ipanggagatong sa kanya up the mountain. They both carried the places or the methods of their death. Kung tayo yun, we'll be carrying an electric chair, dragging an electric chair. Both carried wood to their deaths. Number five, both are sacrificed on the same geographical location, the hills of Moriah. Pag galing ka dyan, magaling ka rin kumanta. Gets? No. The hills of Moriah, was the geographical location was the same. It's the same. 
Abraham was centuries ago before Jesus' time. But there, there, dun nangyari yung mangyaring sacrifice sana kay Isaac. Jesus, in the same way, in that area, was sacrificed. Number six, both are tied up. Ginapos sila. In Genesis, this, um, and the Gospel of John use the same word. The, the word for gapos or bind is called aqueda. Say aqueda. You watch aqueda, the movie. In John 18, it says about Jesus, they bound Jesus. Be, um, um, they bound Jesus. It says they bound Jesus. Ginapos si Jesus. It's, it causes chills because in Genesis 22, it says, Abraham tied up his only son, his son, and placed him on the altar on top of the wood. Grabe. Pareho, pareho. And last is the best because it's a good ending that both of them also experience. Number seven, both are resurrected, though in a different way. Jesus, we know, died. He did die, but he was resurrected as promised and for the mission. Isaac did not die. He was spared. But it's as if he died and was given a new life. Let's give it a round of applause. That proves the point that the Old Testament and the New Testament are connected and we can learn from them. But in the same way, this Bible is God's love message to us. God used the analogy in the story of Isaac to point to Jesus and say, that is what I'm talking about. As with others in the Old Testament. Proving that the Bible is all about Jesus and it's all connected. And the message is clear. It's God's magnificent declaration of his love for us. Tell the person beside you. Remind them because they've forgotten. He's madly in love with you. As am I. So, so here's, I'll end with, the, with this. How can we check if we have allowed God's love to enter our veins? Because it's good. It's a good concept. Say, Lord, love me. Help me to experience your love, your care, your joy. But how can we check if it has entered our veins? If God's love, this is probably the most you will photograph and post about tonight. We can only check if it has produced results. If God's love doesn't make us loving, then we missed the point. If God's love doesn't make us loving, then we missed the point. The best way for a, for example, this medicine to know that it has taken effect is if well anang pain, the results are clear. A teacher will know that a pupil has memorized the lessons if in the exams they did it. A master check if a follower knows the lessons is if they mirror the master. So ask the person beside you, are you loving? Wag kayo sumagot kasi kung kilala mo yan, sabi mo, hindi, hindi ikaw. The results are the ways to know if it has taken its effect. And if you don't feel that yet, okay lang. You have one whole year and a, and a lifetime of journeying with God to make that your destination. But my question is, you have been feasting for some time, you have been hearing about God, for some time. But my question is, are you loving? Don't answer. Are you kind? Or are you the most irritable person in the world? Are you the most judgmental person in the world? Do people, when they see you at the office, say, ha, nagpe feast ka? Ikaw? Then it hasn't penetrated your veins yet. Because the only way you will become love, or you have received God's love, is if it makes you loving. If God's love doesn't make us loving, then we miss the point. Some people, they attend, they serve, but they're still the most critical people on the planet. And it's scary to feel, to be in the presence of these people because they think they know it all. I'd rather get, um, honor a hardworking or a very humble person who is loving versus a very talented servant who's so gifted but when you talk to him or her, they're not loving at all. And their lives do not reflect what they're speaking about or preaching about. If you, if you fail to be nice to people, then you've missed the point. If you fail to be kind, then you miss the point. If you're only 
a thirst or a Saturday Christian or a Sunday Christian, but on Mondays to the other days, it's as if you never heard of the concept of Christ. Then you miss the point. There are three kinds of churches that we will 